It is still unusual to see red wine being fermented in a barrel, and yet more and more high-end producers are doing this. One of the pioneers was Alain Reynaud, and when I worked at Chateau Quinot in 2003, I was able to work on this project. This segment shows the normal fruit processing at Chateau Quinot at that time. Clusters were sorted on the first table, then individual berries were sorted on a second table. Most of this fruit went into the main tanks, but a small amount was peeled off to the small tanks shown. As the small tank was being filled with grape must, it was also being blasted with CO2, essentially dry ice, to cool it down for a short cold soak. The goal now would be to get that must into these custom-made barrels. A stainless steel elbow was made specifically for doing that. The small tank was lifted up over the barrel by the forklift, and a sleeve helped guide the must into the barrel. The whole process of red wine barrel fermentation is tedious and time consuming. For example, as shown here, monitoring fermentation is harder because it is difficult to retrieve juice from the barrel. The most interesting part of barrel fermentation is cap management. When fermentation releases CO2, grape skins float to the top. As with any fermentation, the skins, or cap as it is called, must be resubmerged into the juice. In this system, the barrel is rolled in order to accomplish this. My friend Cedric here is going to demonstrate that. He first sets the bung, which in that time had a special screw in it to keep it from falling out, and he rolls the barrel. After three to four weeks of fermenting on the skins, the free-run juice is drained. This is at first a difficult process, which took us a little time to master. But after a little work, we were able to figure out how to get the juice out of the barrel. The skins were then pulled from the barrel for pressing. A small hand press was used at Kino. Afterwards, the wine was poured back into the same barrels for about 18 months of aging. The pioneering barrel maker for fermentation integral, as it is called, is Tonnellerie Baron. And I'm, I am happy to say that I am enshrined in their marketing literature, shown here. It is, of course, an important question to ask why one should make wine this way, given the extra effort and expense. The most important differences between fermentation integral and regular tank fermentation are, first, exposure to oak when there is heat from fermentation. And secondly, probably more importantly, there's a longer and more complete submersion of the skins in the fermenting juice, leading, hopefully, to more density in the wine. But whether this process really leads to better wine or not, you must be the judge.